and a way of practicing the scale shapes using the cage system, both the chords and the scales, so you can link the two bits together. So what am I talking about here? Well, what we're gonna do is try and play through each of the 12 keys, which would be all the major scale keys. And we're gonna try and do it in a fairly isolated part of the of the neck. So we're not gonna be moving around. So we're not gonna be thinking that, um, say the third fret is where G lives. Any key can be anywhere. You need to get this in here where it's all possible. So, what am I talking about? So I'm gonna start up here in the eighth fret and I'm gonna play a C major chord. And that is gonna be an E shape. And then I, after I've played the chord, I'm then gonna play the scale shape. Then I'm going to go to the key of G. I'm going to play my way through the cycle of fifths. So I'm going to be leaping a fifth every time I change key. So I'm looking for a G. Now the G is here on the 10th fret on the A string. And I'm going to be using a C shape. Then I play that scale. Now what I should add at this point is that I'm starting from root note, playing to highest available note, low, down to lowest available note, and then back to root, then playing the chord. This is so you can hear it as the scale is supposed to be, root up to whatever, but you're also aware of the extended parts that you could use, because you wouldn't always play a scale starting from its root note and playing through to its root note when you come to use it in the real world you must start on scale tones you might there's various things you could start on so you need to know where they are so that's the reason for me to, and you also then need to be able to work out if you need to change from one to another how how you're going to do that from the position you're in so that was the G then we're going to change the key of D that's using a G shape start it this is what you want to be doing you want to play the chord establish the sound because you're listening to hear that that scale sounds right with that chord that's what you're doing you're putting the two bits together once you're okay with that you can then just move seamlessly C coming down G
changing. Now, it's not that massively obvious to your ear that I've changed key, because actually what's happening is only one note is changing within the scale each time. But it's very fluid and you're not registering key changes and that's what you ideally want. I'm just taking the available and common tones and just joining between them. So this is the first part of the exercise. This is what we want to get under our fingers first. We then can chuck in all kinds of strange and peculiar arities like doing them in, in intervals. <laughs> G in thirds could be fourths, fifths, it, it, it varies. But for now, stick with the first bit and then it could be extended in through a variety of ideas. And then we're going to do minor scales, relative minors, then we're going to do pentatonics, then we're going to go through each of the modes. So this is an ongoing exercise. But this is the first part. Yeah. 